It's the final time this famous old ground will stage a North East derby in the Premiership. And tonight, the Roka Raw is at full volume. It's Sunderland against Middlesbrough. The whole match coming up live. Don't miss this. It promises to be something special. Monday Night Football. And our match commentators at Roker Park, Trevor Francis and Alan Parry. Well, Roker Park has been Sunderland's home for 98 years now, and historically, it's never been a lucky ground for Middlesbrough, their visitors from just down the northeast coast. Graham Paul from Hertfordshire referees this 55th meeting here of the two clubs, and Borough, as you may have heard earlier in the programme, have won just seven. Sunderland 15th in the table at the start of play. Nine points from their eight games. But if they win tonight, they could actually move up as many as seven places to eight in the table. They've only managed one win in their last six games before tonight and scored just two goals in that period. A lot depends on Paul Stewart tonight. And he might not have been here at all if another referee, Paul Danson, hadn't admitted his mistake in sending him off at Highbury. It was 16 days ago now and uh, a lot of the players on both teams have had one of their longest breaks ever in a season I would think but of course there are a fair number of internationals out there as well who haven't been so fortunate Middlesbrough incidentally had a one week tour of Thailand during the break and beat the Thai national team amongst others there's the Roka Raw in full throat as Sunderland prepare to play Middlesbrough in a league fixture for the last time ever at Roker Park. Everyone ready, it seems, by the referee. And now it's Middlesbrough in their chain strip of white shirts and blue shorts who get the game underway. And the first ball for Ravanelli, beaten to it by Ord. Ball, the Sunderland captain slices his clearance and Emerson gets his first touch of the ball. Barmby finding Ravenelli in the kind of tackle we'll expect to see a lot of tonight, dispossessing the Italian international. At the other end, Whelan wins it back. Pearson playing it long. It's quite a gusty wind here tonight. The surface in beautiful condition, but the wind could be troublesome. This is Kubitsky, the Polish international, often used or always used, in fact, as a right back, but he's playing at left back tonight because Martin Scott is out suspended. Number eight, Richard Ord, returning after a one-match suspension himself. And Bracewell, the eyes and ears of the manager Peter Reid out there on the pitch. Gareth Hall, a former Chelsea player, gets it back to Bracewell, who's also assistant manager here as well as a vital man in midfield. Melville. And Agnew. Crowd not too happy with the challenge from Fleming. But all the referee has given is a throw-in. Ball out on the right, checks to get a better angle for the cross and it's a useful one too and put her at full stretch to get that one away this is Michael Gray Kubitsky Agnew making a run he tried to pick him out in the box Whelan's clearance all wins it back and Sunderland have made a good start here Trevor yes it was noticeable that when Stewart came into a wide area immediately Ball took up a centre forward position Gray also came in from a wide area to make the two in the box that's important, Alan, because if you've just got the one up front, there are going to be moments in the game when he's going to have to go wide. So therefore, you rely on your teammates to take up that centre-forward position. Pearson delivers the long ball for Barmby. Kubitsky wins it. And the ball came off Gray. It is the throw-in, Neil Cox restored to the side tonight, he was left out for Franco in the 4-0 defeat at Southampton. 
Middlesbrough having lost their last two league games, conceding six goals and not scoring in the process. But before that, they'd won five in a row in League and Cup. Is Gray presented straight to Emerson? Well, that's going to be the problem for Sunderland when they win the ball back like that. There are so few targets in the opposition half. Pearson under pressure here and loses out as well. Musto just tries to calm it down for Middlesbrough. This is Fleming. Whistle's gone, and I'm surprised the players can't hear it. Terrific atmosphere. When you think in a ground that's held 50 odd thousand, only well less than half that number here tonight, but the noise is stupendous. Ravinelli. Pearson. Bombay gets it back to Cox. It is going to need to settle down a little. Bill Wheeler and the former Ipswich player in trouble here against Stewart. He's presented the ball straight to him. And it took a very good tackle to deny Stewart the first opening of the game. Whelan and Vickers crisply into the challenge. Yes, I think it was just that lack of pace that poor Stewart didn't have, otherwise he would have clear. Middlesbrough rocked back on their heels by Sunderland start here. All for that. Travel back heel for Bracewell. Now Agnew. Good football from Sunderland. Showing enormous confidence. Comes out to Gray. Well, there's no doubt who's made the better start here. Well, it's been a terrific start from Sunderland. Gray tries to get under control. Hits it on the volley well wide but the best chance was just prior to that error there from Whelan Paul Stewart's on to it there's Vickers who comes over well timed tackle I'm sure there that Paul Stewart would have just wished he had a couple of yards of extra pace it was that really that prevented him from getting the shot at goal Melville spreads play intelligently to Gareth Hall just caught there from the challenge by Fleming but again the referee's only awarded a throw in there's a poor ball for Fleming Stewart with a lovely little knock on to Agnew ball making ground Gray is also in the middle but a brilliant recovery there from Emerson and Burr off the hook again Yes, it was good play from Agnew, but he wanted to put the early cross in, but as he looked up, there was nobody in the box. That's why he had to hold on to it, and he gave Emerson the chance to get back and get the tackle in. And he's got a bad knock as well. A lot of anxiety from the Sunderland bench when he went down here. Total accident. There certainly was no contact, was there, from Emerson? Agnew tried to put it through Emerson's legs, and uh, it looks like he may have gone over on his ankle. And he's been taken immediately onto the stretcher. That looks uh, rather worrying for Sunderland. Steve Agnew stretched it off, but only seven minutes gone. And the game, I think, will restart with a drop ball. Now, in fact, the referee ordering Middlesbrough to return it to Sunderland and Peter Reid will anxiously await a report from the physio as to Agnew's condition he's being treated off the pitch at the moment still on the stretcher Sunderland going forward again good tackle on ball they seem to have an extra man everywhere, even though they're down to 10 at the moment. Sunderland winning all the important tackles. Here's Kubitsky. And 
Gray. Ball throws it back to him. It was an intelligent ball, however. He was just offside, I think, yes. And it looks for sure now as though uh, Agnew will play no further part in this game. There's another injury on this side. Yes, it's Pearson. Nigel Pearson, he took a bad knock there from Gray. And he's just back into the side after a knee problem. Here's the tackle. Well, plenty of incidents in the opening ten minutes here. Meanwhile, young Michael Bridges waits to come on for Sunderland as replacement for Agnew. He's only uh, 18. In fact, he's only 18 in August. Comes from Whitley Bay and made his debut last season. Quick and skillful player. And uh, at the moment, it looks as though Middlesbrough have got a major problem as well. How unlucky for Pearson. But he's straight back in the action, although he's looking very groggy as he runs back into the field. Confirmation that Agnew has gone off. Yes, obviously with a change there for uh, Sunderland, this caused Peter Reid to make a tactical reshuffle. It's Russell actually who's come on. And he's come on to the left-hand side with Gray now over on the right-hand side in place of Agnew. surprising because Russ is the experienced player in fact he was top scorer last season and he's straight into the action again Look at the cross just taken by the wind behind the goal to the relief of Alan Miller Well, that's the last thing really that Sunderland wanted, a disruption so early on to such a well-tried system. Yes, it is, Alan, but I think that uh, Peter would be absolutely delighted with the start that his side have made. Quite clearly in his opening ten minutes, they've been much, much quicker to the ball than what Middlesbrough have been. Ford's clearance. Oh. Ruben letting it bounce over his head, which is dangerous, but Stewart right behind him again. He commits the foul. It's looked a harsh decision from where I was, and I think his protest is going to win him a yellow card. Well, I feel that's a bit harsh. Sorry, that doesn't warrant a yellow card. I'm not even sure it was a free kick. I wasn't. In fact, I don't think it was. Could be further punishment awaiting Sunderland here. Or Middlesbrough rather, as Sunderland line up the free kick. Ball, Bracewell, and uh, the likeliest taker, I would think, Michael Gray here. Just trying to see what the angle is around the defensive wall. No, they had a little trick up their sleeves. And it was Russell's shot that was well, well off target in the end. Yes, it was certainly a good idea. I think they tried to fool Middlesbrough by thinking that uh, perhaps it was Gray who was going to get the shot, but the pass here from Bracewell, just a little bit too wide for Russell. Another well, youngster, Russell, he's only 22, and has been used mainly as a substitute this season. early injuries disrupting the pattern rather for Sunderland they'd made such a good start Emerson and the goes for a foul by ball on the Brazilian and what a waste Brian Robson will be furious about that 
as he tried to hit the early free kick, the, the ball was actually rolling as he uh, as he struck it. Melville's clearance. Ball's lay off. Ball's still flying in here. What tremendous passion. The referee waving play on. And suddenly Ravanelli breaks. Juninho ahead of him and Barnby to his right. Stewart's layoff. Ball with a rather awkward pass out to the right. Bracewell directing operations and finding Kubitsky. Ball again. Russell is operating down the left now. Michael Gray switched to the right. Pearson on the worse for his earlier injury, it seems. other ten colleagues they're just going to get a moment to uh, actually relax on the ball some of them players are so quick at pressing that's the perfect example there and here's Bracewell Pearson looking for Ravanelli easy header away by Melville and some of them have picked up the rhythm again Paul Gray Bracewell Well, we talk about Sunderland only playing with one man up front nominally but uh, they've committed seven or eight players to this attack and that could be a danger as it breaks down with Emerson in possession but Sunderland are working so hard when they lose the ball Pearson at full stretch to get that one away as well. Musto. Ravenelli's onside. Barnby in the middle. Juninho arriving. It's a dangerous cross. It was the first real attack of any note that Middlesbrough have managed with 16 minutes on the clock. Yeah, it's a good ball in from Ravanelli, but there's no real height in the box of Middlesbrough. The two players who challenged for it, both small players, Janino and Barnby, not a problem for some of them's big defenders. I don't think the referee's going to be very happy about that challenge. He's calling Fleming over. And he's let him off. Certainly a late challenge, but just how late was it? And as you can see, rather late. Kavitsky. <laughs> kept very calm in that tight situation. Well, often away from home, man, the home team come at you for the first 10 or 15 minutes. This has been incessant attacking here from Sunderland. It is very important for Middlesbrough they don't concede in this early period because I can't think that Sunderland can keep this sort of tempo going for 90 minutes. It really is an incredible start. The pressing has been top class. They really have had a go at Middlesbrough in this early period of the game. They've only won one of their four matches in the Premiership here so far. That was 1-0 against Coventry. They had goalless draws against Leicester and West Ham and lost the other one. 2-1 to Newcastle in the other North East Derby so they've already dropped seven points here this season Juninho Emerson Ravanelli it's a lovely 
ball. Fleming on the left. Person with the shot. a shot this was the power of this I think it may have took a slight deflection but absolutely no chance but Tony Cohen I've never seen a ball hit as hard as this Alan there it was it was definitely deflected and I think it's off Paul Bracewell but the power of that shot incredible Emerson's second goal in the league this season also scored in the 4-1 win against West Ham and a man who's probably been the biggest success really of any of the uh, expensive international imports to Middlesbrough has given them the lead it has to be said against the run of play here but what a goal what a shot deflection or not that was a stunner Gray and Sunderland try and pick themselves up from that disappointment Russell flying in there with Pearson well whichever angle you look at this from Trevor it was a cracker well we spoke at great length yesterday about the goal from Letizia but this is even better Letizia was more measured this is absolute power obviously accuracy the keeper's got no chance Tony Cohen I don't think any keeper in the country would have possibly saved that I was going to say in fairness deflection or not that looked as though it was bound for the net the moment it left his boot well I'm interested to see Andy at half time with his machine just to see the speed of that ball I can't imagine many shots have gone in much harder than that this season Now Ball, the Sunderland captain, as they try and pick things up again. Russell trying to get in between Cox and the goalkeeper. He's such a favourite here too, isn't he? You mentioned Emerson with the Middlesbrough supporters. It's interesting, you know, Alan, before the game when the players come out to warm up, Janino and Emerson come out together, and immediately the home, the away supporters, I should say, broke into a pass with Emerson. He's obviously more popular than Janino. certainly is at the moment Kubitsky with a long ball looking for Stewart a great try for handball from the home supporters and the referee has upheld that claim it's a penalty Whelan can't believe it but penalty it is well Whelan's already been booked and uh, will the referee send him off I mean once again that's a really harsh decision I mean he's been booked for a harsh decision now he gives, gives away a penalty he can't believe it, I can't believe it and the yellow card has been shown to the goalkeeper for his protest so it's Paul, the captain and it's a goal Ray from the penalty spot brings Sunderland level well Alex Ray can't believe his luck because the keeper should have saved this he dives over it it's not a particularly good penalty really Alan Miller should have saved that Alan well it's all happening here at Roker shown the yellow card just before that penalty went in and I must say you have to have some sympathy with his protest it looked a very harsh decision against Phil Whelan the point will not matter at all to Middlesbrough but in a way a little bit of justice has been done they certainly uh, didn't deserve to be a goal behind here Sunderland 
But that is a decision that will be debated at some length, I'm sure. Harrison getting a quick running repair there as the game gets underway again. And those sort of challenges happen in every game up and down the country, possibly five or six times during a game. Is Gray. Fleming with a back healer. Emerson called in possession. And the tackling getting a little out of hand. Fleming has already had one warning from the referee. Presumably trying to say he didn't hear the whistle. got underway again already Gray flying forward for them the clearance was by Vickers but back they come again it's Stewart and suddenly it's Middlesbrough on the counter attack Juninho in possession Barnby to his right Emerson's there again fine save well that was a great attack wasn't it Juninho went it forward at pace but the groan that this fellow made off Emerson to support him ball runs loose he wastes no time hitting it again and that's a great save from Colton Musto under pressure and fouled in the end Alex Ray the culprit the man who brought Sunderland level only his second goal for the club. Ravanelli took it on the chest and was brought down, according to the referee. Well, I was about to say this is Ravanelli distance, but after the way that Emerson's been shooting, I think he may fancy his luck from this sort of distance. Well, they have so many options from free kicks. Middlesbrough, so many talented players all able to hit the target from any angle or distance Juninho and Ravanelli over the ball at the moment Emerson lurking with intent in the background and one thing is sure Alan home base player's not going to take it it's going to be a foreign player Juninho well it wasn't that far over despite the howls of disapproval from the home fans I really think from this sort of distance it's perhaps a little bit too far out for the little curl over the wall. Never gets it down. Possibly been better off going for power. Stewart took that well on the chest and finds Kubitsky. No foul by Emerson. And again, Juninho finds himself in a lot of space. This is Ravanelli. Good return ball, Juninho going in, but Houghton was quick and decisive. A lot to admire that move. A great run from Ravanelli. Good ball in to Juninho. But Tony Colton was alive to it. Came off his line very, very quickly. Race well caught in possession. Barnby goes down. No free kick has been given. And the Middlesbrough players are furious with referee Graham Pollock at the moment. possessed by Bracewell and worked hard to make sure his mistake wasn't serious you can see he's still a little angry over one or two of the decisions that have gone against Borough
Melville winning the header, but it drops nicely for Juninho. Tries to release Ravanelli. Kubitsky read the danger. Excellent cover that from Kubitsky. That's one reason why Sunderland is so tight. They're back four. The ball got in, played well by Juninho in behind Ord. Fullback came in nice and tight. Otherwise, Ravinelli was in. Huge, huge clearance. As Vickers backpedalling. Miller's clearance was sound. Sound. Ord. This is Hall. Gray tries to tempt the challenge. And that was a useful ball as well. Pearson with a good clearance though, finding Neil Cox. Juninho, <laughs> haven't seen too much of him yet. Ravinelli tried to play it quickly back but Sunderland's defence living up to its reputation the only goal they have conceded they could have done nothing about Well, it's been a very eventful opening half an hour at Roca. One stunning goal from this man and a highly controversial penalty bringing Sunderland level. Although all the supporters shouted handball at first against Whelan, it was clear from the replay that uh, the offence that he's alleged to have committed was a straightforward foul. Not a handball, but that won't make him feel any better. The game has almost settled into a rhythm now after that frantic opening 20 minutes or so. Place well looking for Kubitsky. Took that well. And gets inside Cox. Good run by the Polish international. Releases Russell. Good ball. Stewart in a great position in the middle, and that was fine defending this time by Whelan to deny Stewart on the far post. What great play that was from Sunderland. Very inventive fullback play from Kubitsky. Plays it inside Nigel Pearson. Russell's got the beat on him. That's a terrific cross. And as you said, Alan, good defending from Whelan at the back post. And he's going right under Stewart's head. Corner whipped in high towards ball. Who won the header and the little rebound keeps Middlesbrough in trouble. Gray gets it back to Gray. Good work by Emerson and Van Bracewell stopped him in his tracks. Seems to really relish the physical side of the game as well, Emerson. He's not just a marvellously gifted player. He will tackle with the best of them on a night like this and that's pretty impressive isn't it not to mention a stunning goal now Hall for Sunderland Bracewell Gray takes over and Stewart's giving it away Ravinelli looks for the run from Juninho and it's a glorious ball but he's offside certainly was a great ball and that must have been very tight well, hard to see how either of those uh, Borough players could have been offside now 
Now Stewart. Got away from the challenge well. And that was a fine effort. Yeah, his first intentions were trying to release ball, but it goes alone onto his left foot. Comfortable height for Miller. 32 a week ago, Paul Stewart, and a long career at the top level, of course, with Manchester City, Spurs, Liverpool, and now Sunderland. Ravanelli finds Juninho. And Ravanelli's miles offside here. was miles offside Alan but only through good organised defending here's Cox Juninho good effort but always travelling wide he's actually managed four goals in his eight premiership matches this season Juninho he only scored two in 21 last season let's have another look back at the penalty incident here and why we think it was given against Wheeler push on uh, Stewart presumably anyway Ray put it away while the arguments were still raging good defending by Fleming Ravanelli was spotted by the referee yes there was no attempt to play the ball just ran into Melville made an easy decision for the referee he had no attempt to play the ball realised that Melville was going to head it so Ravanelli just ran into him Well, don't forget that we have another major match for you on Sunday. And what a match that promises to be. Newcastle United against Manchester United. Our Super Sunday game starts at 3 o'clock. Ten minutes of an exciting first half remaining at Roka. Sunderland have been on top really territorially unlucky to go behind and level in a debatable fashion but the danger is always there to Sunderland isn't it when Middlesbrough break forward with extra bit of class that they've got in Emerson, Barnby, Janino and Ravanelli is always very very threatening when they get good possession Oh, it sees Hall out on the right in lots of space. Gray in support. And none too solid, that defending by Middlesbrough. But Gracewell having to work hard in midfield and loses out to Musto. However, Ravanelli is dispossessed and Kubitsky sees the chance to come forward here. Challenge by Musto on Ray will surely earn him a yellow card. It indeed has. Yes, as Alex Ray was about to lay the ball off, so Robbie Musto came in with a late challenge. Here goes Russell. Lovely return ball for Russell. Good work there by Miller. I must say, for all the multi-million pounds worth of foreign talent and very good home-based players as well that Middlesbrough have assembled, it's Sunderland who's most impressed me in this first half. 
not just with their commitment and organisation, things you expect from a Peter Reid team, but also with the standard of their football. Here they go again, forward, looking impressive. Stewart took it on the chest, but Musto intercepts. Ball. Lovely football, the home crowd appreciating this. Kubitsky. Ball wants it back quickly. Wiesler. Melville. Definitely the problem that Southern have is that they can pass it very well in defensive areas, also in midfield, but once they get near the box, they don't have too many options open to them. It's very, very difficult when they've just got the one player up front in Stewart. Kubitsky looking for him, but uh, Vickers just let it run on. That's an example. The ball has to be perfect into the front player, otherwise Middlesbrough can just allow it to run through to the keeper. Ravanelli's not having the best of nights at the moment. Gives the ball away again here. And then Sunderland commit the same mistake. Alex Ray. This is Emerson. Michael Gray working hard to deny him space. And then very good defending again from Sunderland. In the end, ball uh, to really just lash it clear. There were no other options on for him. Ravanelli. This is Cox. Must do in a good position. He tried to pick him out on the near post. But Sunderland are very, very hard to get in behind. Yes, he actually tried to drive that ball in. I just wonder if that's because it's a lack of height in the box. Need Janino and Barnby there. and slows it down this is Ravanelli that's a good ball Musto with a chance here well he gets into some great positions Robbie Musto but his goal scoring records pretty disappointing once again another great ball from Ravanelli Musto got in between Ord and Hall Feeling with a risky back pass there for Miller who kept very calm now Emerson Juninho Cox to his right, Ravanelli is ahead of him, and Ravanelli is offside. Well, there's no doubt he was offside, but just prior to that, he played a great ball. Here we see it here, a good run from Musto. Ball gets back, tracks back well, holds there. Just lets it come off his knee, back to Tony Colton. Melville for Sunderland. Gray. This is Hall. Melville's continued his run forward. Stewart also on the edge of the box. Can Gray get the cross in? There's not much room for him. And it's good work this time from Middlesbrough, forcing him all the way back to his own half. Now Kubitsky. Middlesbrough have all 11 men back behind the ball in their own half. Bitsky. Russell. And they continue to weave excellent patterns in the middle of the field. Patience. Paul. And that'll be a corner if it goes. Well, that was good play from Sunderland. Showed a lot of patience. I think Emerson made it slightly easier for him in midfield. He tried to read it, came out, and that gave them the opening to work the ball over to the right-hand side. He got the extra man in, and it was Hall who drove in trying to get the shot on goal. They won themselves a corner. Ford is on the near post. Melville on the far post. Ball near the penalty spot. And 
and it was Miller who acted quicker than anyone. Kubitsky. Russell tries to play it back to him. It wasn't the best ball. Enabled Cox to make the tackle. Tight in that corner for Russell. Now Bracewell. And Hall tripped and did well to recover. Kubitsky. Right into the final minute of the half, uh, Trevor, how do you assess what you've seen so far? Well, it was a whirlwind start, wasn't it, from Sunderland? I did say they couldn't possibly keep that tempo up. Just as they got on top, so we saw that extraordinary shot from Emerson. And then we saw the very, very dubious penalty decision, which Ray scored from so really at half-time. It's a very, very even game. Could go either way, Alan. Michael Gray in possession. Ravinelli's tackle. There will be a couple of minutes stoppage time, I would think, for the early injury to Steve Agnew. Good play again by Bracewell. Now Alex Ray. He allowed Barnby to intercept them. Fleming finding Emerson, two players immediately hunt him down and that's been a feature of Sunderland's play in this half when they haven't had possession, they have worked so hard here's Juninho ran straight into trouble Bracewell that could be a terrific ball, it might just have too much on it but Stewart has made something out of it anyway goal kick in the end just wonder how long he can actually keep this going up front by himself would you say he is 32 years of age now obviously a very fit 32 years of age but to play by yourself for 90 minutes like he's doing not particularly easy and here he is again and uh, no support when he received it Emerson showing lovely control in the middle and finding Juninho Well, it's easy to see why Sunderland have such a staggeringly good defensive record. They uh, really are so disciplined and well organised. Yes, it had to be something special to uh, breach that defence. It certainly was. Juninho loses Kevin Ball with that deft little twist and turn. But oh dear. That was not what we expected. Two minutes of stoppage time completed at the end of this half. As Ord delivers the long ball. And a beautiful ball it was too for Gray. Unlucky. And Fleming is dispossessed. Alex Ray couldn't keep it in. But Sunderland get on with the throw in. Bracewell. I'll tell you what would be an interesting stat. The number of dispossessions that they've had in this game. Quite incredible. Every time Middlesbrough have had possession of the ball, Sunderland have snapped at their heels. They've won the ball on so many occasions. Whelan hangs the free kick up for Ravanelli. Cox. 
Done well. Not an easy one that for Coton. He saw Muster running in on him and had to move quickly. And that brings the first half to an end. And an excellent half it was. The highlights without question. This goal from the Brazilian Emerson. Never mind the deflection. Feel the power. And then Sunderland came level again. Was that a foul by Whelan? He couldn't believe it. He didn't believe it. Alex Ray took the penalty away and that gave Sunderland a 1-1 scoreline which is the least they deserve in an excellent first half here at Roker Park. We'll be back with our assessment of Sunderland against Middlesbrough. After a very bright first half. Let's go back to Roker and rejoin Trevor Francis and Alan Parry. Thanks Richard, welcome back to Roker Park which will be no more of course next season as a premiership ground. Sunderland due to move to a 40,000 all-seater stadium and this club with a famous history six league championships over the years though most of them it has to be said were at the turn of the century will have a home to match that of Middlesbrough their opponents tonight and Newcastle United and the North East really is back as a major centre of English football again Middlesbrough 10th in the table at the start of play if they win tonight, they could go up three places to seventh. Their away form has been disappointing this season. Just one away win at Everton. They drew at Forest and were beaten at Chelsea and Southampton. Indeed, they've only won four of their last 23 away games in the Premiership. Sunderland get the second half underway then. Sunderland in the stripes, as though you needed to be told. And I'm sure Peter Reid will be asking for more of the same from his team. Brian Robson will be demanding more full stop from his players. Particularly, I suspect, in an attacking sense and in their midfield defending. Juninho going forward straight away. Couldn't find Ravanelli. Excellent cover again. The two central defenders, Ord and Melville, have played really well. That was a good opportunity there that uh, Juninho wasted. Ravnelli was free, badly underweighted the pass of Juninho. Bracewell just gets it back from ball. And finds Ray. Out on the left. And that looked like a foul, surely, as Kovicki came in field, but the referee saw nothing wrong with it. Well, let's go down to Nick Collins on the touchline. Nick. Alan, one other thing emerged at half-time. Alan Miller, the Middlesbrough goalkeeper, wasn't booked for dissent, but he was booked for ungentlemanly conduct, for wasting time and trying to gain an advantage at that penalty. Cheers, Nick. That's Graham Paul's uh, version of the yellow card. Ungentlemanly conduct. Forward by Whelan rather aimlessly. One of the three players who were cautioned in that first half Miller, Whelan, and Musto. All three of them from the visitors. Stewart now for Sunderland. Ray under pressure from Musto. And he took another fine tackle from Ord. Yes, you saw that Ray there being put under pressure by the Middlesbrough players. That's the opposite of what we saw in the first half. As I'm sure Brian Robson, who was one of the finest defensive midfielders of his time, still playing, of course. Both him and Viv Anderson, his number two, are still registered as players. But uh, he won't have been happy with the uh, lack of pressure from some of his midfield players in that first half. Brian Robson played uh, as a sweeper on that tour of Thailand who I mentioned before the kickoff. Dinesman's <laughs> flag for an offside here. <laughs> Incidentally, Brian Robson is £1,500 worse off today as a result of an FA fine for 
words he said out of order to a referee. Are you talking about the penalty in the first half, Alan, are you? <laughs> no, I, uh, I presume he kept his thoughts on that to himself. Lucas turns away from danger and finds Emerson. And Ravenelli again is miles offside. Sunderland before tonight have kept clean sheets in four of their eight league games. Defending is no problem for them. If only they can find the same sort of formula in scoring goals. They're going to do pretty well in their first season back at the top after five years. But it's a big hit. Juninho getting up well. Fleming onto it, Ravinelli and Barnby both in the middle, but the cross was well blocked by Bracewell. And now Gray. Gray goes in hard on Fleming, but Musto keeps possession for Middlesbrough. Emerson. Pearson. The challenge by Ball to dispossess him. Russell did well and to carry the fight to the heart of the Middlesbrough defence. Yes, and Emerson did well too. The timing of the tackle had to be spot on. Otherwise, he would have been in the book. And another good challenge by Emerson. But Middlesbrough not looking too comfortable at times at the back. And Ravidelli's had one of those frustrating nights. Ray. Well, it looked like a little nudge there by Whelan, but the linesman was perfectly placed to disagree. Goal kick. Well, it's a pretty sorry statistic of Ravinelli's night so far, isn't it? Especially for a player in great form. He's just uh, scored three goals for the Italian national side to make it 8 in 13 internationals he's already scored 10 goals 6 of them in the premiership for Middlesbrough and his haircut's not too special either maybe that's taken his strength away <laughs> what you might regard as significant incidentally is that Ravinelli has yet to score in an away game for Middlesbrough this season all those goals have come at home Certainly nothing to do with tactics. Middlesbrough are uh, very much an attacking side home and away. Now Fleming. Benelli takes on all. The defender wins the battle. However, he has conceded the corner. Fine, consistent player, Richard Ord. His 10th season now as a first-team regular, and he's still only in his mid-20s. Right, 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 right. This could be Middlesbrough's first corner, we're not sure. It is. It's not a bad one over Ravinelli's head, and it comes back to him, and out to Cox, and blocked on the line. Good goalkeeping there. Well, that looked as if it could be Ravenelli's first goal, but the ball eventually ran to that man, Cox. Terrific block on the line. Houghton hesitates again, and once more, Ravenelli, yes! He's got it! And wouldn't you know it, just as we were pointing out, he hadn't managed to go away from Teesside. He's got one on Wearside, of all places. Well, the previous corner caused one or two problems. Middlesbrough do well. They keep the ball in there in the danger area. Whelan miss kicks. Pearson goes for it. And of all people, it falls to Ravinelli. And he's just not going to miss from that sort of distance.
on his favourite left foot. He makes no mistake. Ravanelli has now scored more goals this season than the entire Sunderland team put together. And Sunderland again find themselves behind in this game. But perhaps not for long as they go forward menacingly here. Russell's cross is a good one. Fleming has to come and meet it quickly and concede the corner. Well, we've got a game and a half now. Russell did well there, Alan, to keep that ball in play, but they've got to get into that box much quicker. The support just didn't come quickly enough. The clearance by Pearson, driven back in by Gracewell. That could have gone absolutely anywhere. What a block that was from Fleming. I think that may have found its way into the back of the net. Here we see it from Gracewell. Was it going in? Yes, I don't think Miller would have saved that. What a block that was from Fleming. He guards the near post as the corner comes over again. Put clear, and this time Gracewell's shot is not quite so impressive. Frustration for Peter Reid, who's done such a magnificent job in his 19 months in charge here. Would you believe they've only lost 11 of the 61 league games he's been in charge of before tonight. What a record. And Peter there just shows him one or two instructions to the players. Once again, another little tactical change. Michael Gray's gone to the left-hand side. Craig Russell's come over to the right-hand side. Barnby, meanwhile, looks for Ravanelli again in the middle. He couldn't quite get it on that famous left foot. And Pearson comes forward. And the nature of the game has suddenly changed and swung in Middlesbrough's favour. Emerson. Ravanelli beaten to it by Melville. Fleming calm defending again by Ord Ray running into a bit of trouble but he got out of it nicely well it might be a suitable moment to point out as we have a look at Ravinelli's goal again that Sunderland have got real problems getting back into this game Trevor yeah, you see something here, they can't get it clear, but Middlesbrough do well to keep it in the danger area. Wheeland as well, Pearson can't quite get to it, but Ravinelli makes no mistake. And in only one league game so far this season, have Sunderland managed to score more than one goal. That was when they won 4-1 at Nottingham Forest, so that's a measure of the task facing them here. Ravanelli goes down, touching his face from the challenge. I didn't see any intent from our distance. Maybe the replay will suggest otherwise. We shall see. Well, there are plenty of boos from the home supporters, but when it's a head injury, the referee is quite right to stop the game immediately. Let's see what happened. Yeah, he just clashes here with Ord. Yeah, certainly no intent at all by the defender. But Ravanelli will have a barrel swelling over the eye. But more importantly, another goal on the record sheet. Goal number 11 for him this season for his club side and when you add the three international goals as well it's not bad is it for the middle of October and a little bit of an incident there involving Barnby and Ord I think it was off the ball and it's a red card yes what happened there Alan was as Barnby went down the floor Ord actually stamps on him and the referee has spotted it it was a good spot. He put his studs all over Barnby. You see the incident here. 
We watch now as he goes to the floor. What a stupid thing. thing to do. It's his left foot, it is. Bobby loses his boots. There you go. I'm afraid to say that looked as deliberate as you can get. I don't think there was any accident about that. And that's the second time this season that Richard Ord has been sent off. He was dismissed in the game against Derby, has already served one suspension. And in fact, Peter Reid's team now have just about the worst disciplinary record in the Premiership. That's the fourth Sunderland player to be sent off. They had two dismissed, remember, at Arsenal in their last league game. That's three players in uh, two matches, and they've had a lot of yellow cards as well. And in terms of tonight, they've got massive problems now. 2-1 down, they're just coming up to an hour completed, and down to 10 men. They were down to 9 men, remember, at Highbury. And I must say, they put on a marvellous display to hold out against Arsenal for so long that day, but this is a different situation. going to require prodigious effort now on the part of those ten men to pull Sunderland back into contention the clearance by Whelan drops dangerously here Melville knew that Ravenelli was right behind him and how composed can you get brilliant Kovitsky be paying for blood now every time there's a Middlesbrough tackle and the stewards having to uh, restrain them we don't want to see that he's got swapping shirts he almost swapped shorts then hour gone it's all happening at Roca as we thought it might Gray, Kibitsky on to Bracewell. And those two keep ball in the corner. Still grey. the captain Billy Ball slides it in for Stewart Stewart on to Gray a good tackle by Pearson but suddenly Ball comes to get it back again and finds Ruffle Sunderland the level what character this team has Fantastic play by Sunderland, a great driving run from Ball, plays a terrific ball, Russell's there where he should be, it's no more than a side foot, but you have to give credit for the position that he takes up, comes in at the back post, I've seen those miss, but he takes it really well. And last season's top scorer opens his account for this season. The Roka Raw, full-throated again. And the ten men are back on level terms. <laughs> Ravinelli's goal seems just a memory already. But here goes Juninho. A fine run. A tackle. By Bracewell, a judge to have been a foul. And this looks decent territory for Ravinelli. Yes, I would think so, but just returns to the goal that Sunderland scored. Not particularly good defending again from Middlesbrough, and they had enough chances to get that ball away. A real determined play by Sunderland. Ravinelli, Juninho and Emerson, the terrible trio involved again. What can they 
get the juice this time. Ravinelli's left foot to the delight of all the fans at that end did not produce anything very spectacular. No, it wasn't the best free kick, was it? Just like Janino's. Couldn't bring it back down too much height. But what a comeback that is by Sunderland. Down to 10 men. Tremendous character. Less than half an hour to go. I'm sure that Peter Reid would take a draw at this moment. Our Penny would. Well, Middlesbrough have one of the poorest defensive records in the Premiership. And Brian Robson will be concerned once again about the way they've conceded goals here tonight. Well, the last time we were in the northeast for that marvellous Newcastle Villa game, I remember, as you will, that Aston Villa were down to 10 men, and in the last half an hour, it looked like Newcastle. Rather than that, and Russell burst onto the ball again here. Good goalkeeping from Miller. And some of them will believe that they can make light of their disadvantage. Good pass this, and Gray wants to take Once again, good position, comes in from wide. Marvellously entertaining match. And very much back in the balance. Ravinelli finds Fleming. Whoops. Embarrassment. It's the first time for 14 years, incidentally, that these two clubs have met in the top division. And in the last meeting, back in April 1982, Middlesbrough won 2-0 here. Ball, caught in possession, but Bracewell wins it back. And he's left out to Musto and brought him down. He's going to be in trouble here, Bracewell. Yellow car produced straight away. Yes, it was initially good pressing from Bracewell, and then Musto reversed the rows. Good pressing from him. Bracewell finds himself in the book. Now, would it be tempting fate to say that Middlesbrough's free kicks so far tonight have been disappointing? I'll never get out of Sunderland alive if Forrest Bull here. Juninho is going to take this one. I'm safe for the moment. I really feel he's too far out, Alan, to get it up and over the wall like that. He must be all of, what, 23, 24 yards. It's not going to be Colton from there. Here's this run from Ball. Great pass across the box. Good position from Russell. Equally good finish. A tremendous response. Well, just having a bit of a discussion with the referee. Now, Craig Russell was a prolific goal scorer in his younger days for the youth and reserve teams here. He carried it on last season at first team level. Hasn't had much chance to show what he can do in the Premiership this season. But certainly did in that moment. Too popular again. He's given the free kick to Middlesbrough. Well, he has. 
but surprisingly a foul against Middlesbrough you're right there's three to converge on no Janino so he might be on the floor at that moment he looked like the poor unfortunate school kid caught in the yard there by three of the bigger boys and the foul still went against him five foot five and nine and a half stone hardly equipped for a physical battle stronger and fitter this season though Ravinelli does well to find Emerson they've got men over here one of them is Juninho but Coton anticipated marvellously well again just look at the bench Alan to see if there's any suggestion of a tactical change from Middlesbrough with the one man numerical advantage but they're still going to keep Ravinelli up front by himself Sutherland just changed it slightly Russell has now gone forward to join Stewart so we've got two men up in the attack that free kick has just come against Stewart launched early for Fleming but it'll be too deep for him Stewart still shaking his head in disbelief Cheers from the Roka faithful in Sunderland's free kick. <laughs> Stewart. Musto. And it goes to Emerson. Can't control it, but almost won it back from Bracewell. That's clever play from Kovitsky. And ball and a great pass out to Gray. Could have been a dangerous ball, but in the end it went, well, they didn't want it, straight to Whelan. Well, that shouldn't happen, Alan. Middlesbrough there, Pearson and Whelan with two on two at the back. Especially with a one-man numerical advantage, it should never happen that. And now Gray has given it away again. And they might be punished for that. As Juninho comes forward, Barnby and Ravinelli in support. Played the wrong ball though. Michael Gray again. Tremendously exciting player when he gets a bit more time than he's had tonight. Ball. Russell showing his pace here against Whelan. Stewart is in the middle, it goes in short to Ray, who's dispossessed by Musto. Now Fleming. Vickers releases Emerson. On it goes to Cox. Juninho. Foul. Free kick to Middlesbrough. A reminder but it's your chance tonight as every night to nominate your man of the match 0891 double one double one oh one oh eight nine one double one double one oh one Vickers for Middlesbrough Barnby Pearson waits and finds Juninho and that's a lovely little off ball on from him and they've got strength in the middle here as well with both Barnby and Ravinelli well placed but the cross a little bit late coming in and Kevin Ball deflected behind for a corner Vickers comes forward for the kick, so too is Whelan. He's played towards him on the near post. They can try again. Excellent near post header from Bracewell. Big danger Middlesbrough with his three big centre-halves all come forward. And 
suddenly Coton is out furious with his defenders for allowing Barnby that much space well, that was a good chance for Barnby the corner was hit with tremendous pace could have been a goal easily by Vickers gives Sunderland a free kick and this game still intriguingly in the balance Kubitsky for Sunderland Stewart just feels to Find out where the defender is right behind him. Bracewell chips a lovely looking ball forward. Danger here. And Vickers with an excellent clearance. Gray. Fox can't really get his way out of that little uh, hole, but he managed to use Pearson to help him out. Peter Reid, I'm sure, will be kicking every ball himself. Russell now. That's a useful one for Ray. Wild effort. But it did take a deflection, and he has got a corner. Yeah, it's an excellent forward run that from Ray. Deflection from Whelan. Didn't cause a problem to Miller, but uh, another determined run from Sunderland. You would have felt that at this moment, 2-2, they would have settled for that. But then giving it up, they're still going for victory. And you can't pay them a better tribute than to say it's hard to believe that it's they with the ten men at the moment. Melville has come to the near post. Ray will take the kick. Swung over by Ray, the goalkeeper hesitated. And that could have been fatal hesitation as well as Stewart climb high. Good corner, wasn't it? Well worked. Stewart gets up above Pearson. It's a good chance. You'd be disappointed, didn't do better with that. Great jump. Come quite directed on target. And goalkeeper Alan Miller, a relieved man. Juninho, Ravanelli. On to the left foot. And a pretty poor effort. into the final quarter of an hour then and Sunderland looking every bit as likely to win this match as Middlesbrough at the moment despite the fact that they have only 10 men Richard Ord sent off for stamping on an opponent Brings the clearance forward and finds Juninho. Fleming's in a great position down the left-hand side. And now he gets it from Musto. Juninho just drops off and finds room for himself so intelligently. Here's Emerson. Now Ravanelli, but again he was a bit lazy in trying to control the ball. And Sunderland have possession themselves with Stewart taking on Pierce. Craig Russell is in a good position in the middle if he can get the cross in. He almost did. And Ball manages to win it back and find Gray. And he goes towards Ray. Oh, double deflection. Strange one that. Juninho. Ravanelli. little Brazilian beaten to it again it was such an enthusiastic tackle by Ball he must have been afraid that he scored an own goal for a moment he's put some effort in tonight as Ball 10 seconds to go he's up the other end gets back there to dispossess Janino he's a tremendous game 
enormously popular figure he's been in his uh, six years here. And now Sunderland have to defend again. And the uh, header by Cox goes straight back out to the taker. And now Juninho with a chance. Thought he was shoot then, really. It seemed on for the shot. Pressure from Middlesbrough. Bracewell relieves the pressure on Sunderland for the moment. That'll be a Middlesbrough throw. Juninho. That's a good ball. Barnby. The run by Cox. That's the area where they've got to get the ball, Alan, because Cox has been open for the last five minutes there. He's actually played the more difficult ball. Emerson would have been the better ball just to his right. Stewart took that beautifully on the chest, turned on by ball. He's there again. I would have thought he was a contender for that... Uh, out of the match vote, Kevin Ball, he's had a marvellous game as Trevor pointed out before. Yeah! Bracewell, a steady performance as ever by him. And suddenly, Melville almost ran into trouble then against Juninho. Coton's clearance has dropped straight to Fleming. You've got to be aware of the offside here, Middlesbrough. Ravanelli, Juninho. Good run by Barnaby. On it goes again to Cox. They've got uh, strength in numbers here. Juninho, lovely little turn, but just slipped at the vital moment. Brave header away by Gray, but now it's Emerson for Middlesbrough. Ten minutes to go. Will we see a winner at Roger tonight? Now Ravanelli. Emerson couldn't quite get there. Still Middlesbrough come forward. But there's a good ball out of defence to relieve the pressure for a moment. Russell beaten to it by Whelan. Middlesbrough looking ominously a little bit stronger perhaps in the last few minutes. Maybe the effect of 11 men against 10 will tell in this last 10 minutes. Juninho. Musto. And now Emerson. Ravanelli finds Juninho and that could have easily caught Coton by surprise he reacted well he's certainly had enough space for the shot but uh, hits the target that was real great sort of power but you're right Alan the last 10 minutes you would think that the passing ability of these Middlesbrough players, Janino, Emerson, Ravinelli, Barnby, could just be decisive. But you can't write something off. They're looking to try and hit Middlesbrough whenever they can on the counter-attack. But the pace of Russell up there is causing plenty of problems. But I saw a fair bit of Sunderland when they won the first division championship last season and they really have got terrific team spirit as well as some very talented players kept clean sheets in 26 of their 46 games in the first division that season it's the rock upon which their championship was built no clean sheet tonight but they have played extremely well Gray for that just went over the line Middlesbrough's throw and uh, pause for breath to remind you of the telephone number to make your vote for man of the match 0891 Double one oh one at oh eight nine one double one double one oh one. Sunderland almost in a bit of danger, but Hall gets them out. Yes, he had to just clear that anywhere. He's put under pressure there by Braceful. Two minutes with players quickly pressed him. His only option really was to kick it out of play. Juninho runs into trouble. Oh, 
Getting it forward. Vickers beats Stewart to it. Now Fleming. Emerson. Ravanelli. Back to Emerson. Not quite sure what he was attempting there, but it didn't come off. No, I don't think he fancied the shot. He was on his left foot. Fleming beats Ray to it. Now Musco lines up the shot. And it only just avoided the embarrassment of going out for a throw-in. A very good season, Robbie Musto, and uh, Brian Robson says he's played as well as anybody, but certainly seems to uh, lose it a little bit when the chance of a goal comes along. But I'm sure Brian Robson will be amongst the many watching Sky on Sunday afternoon when we show Newcastle United against Manchester United, one of the biggest fixtures of the season. Our programme begins at three. Sunderland have a free kick. Just a shade over five minutes to go at Roca. There's their late drama in store. That's a foul by Cox, a tackle from behind on Gray that is bound to earn him the inevitable. There's a tackle from behind and uh, also with two feet. Yellow card for Cox. Four Middlesbrough players caution tonight, and of course we've had the uh, sending off on the Sunderland side award and the booking for Bracewell. Getting ball, getting up well, but couldn't direct the header goalwards. Peter Reid urging that final five minutes of effort from his players. you might argue it's a game that neither side really deserves to lose well, Alex Ray wasn't going to duck out of that challenge with Wheeler Stewart was a little bit unhappy about the tackle that went in before that Yes, I think as the ball goes loose here, Alex Ray is expecting a 50-50 challenge with Whelan. So he makes sure he's not involved in it at all, he just puts it anywhere. Ravanelli flicking it on, Juninho can't get there. Cleared by Hall. Foul given against Kevin Ball, surprisingly. Now Fleming is fouled. The referee's played a symphony on his whistle tonight. Good tackle by Ray. Excellent play by him. Russell just helps it on to Michael Gray. Sunderland go looking for a winner again. The ten men with three minutes to go. Russell uh, just took his eye off the ball. A little bit slow. It wasn't a particularly good pass, though, was it, from Ravinelli? I'm surprised, though, often players of this ability, I'm talking about world class players, have given it away, despite the fact they've got an extra man. Now, Kavisky's given it away. Another very experienced international, capped about uh, 50 odd times by Poland. with a long ball but into no man's land two minutes then for this northeast derby to be decided Stewart and the pace and tenacity of the game continues into the dying moments as 
Miller takes his life in his hands there, coming out of his penalty area to challenge Russell. Got away with it. Ray taking it forward for Stewart, who was adjusted back into the defender. Better be careful not to talk himself into a yellow card here. Maybe the referee decided he used his elbow. Barnby. And Sunderland still working so hard to come and win it back. Gray. We talk about honesty and integrity of players. Peter Reid has produced it from every one of the men in red and white striped shirts tonight. They have shown tremendous commitment to the cause. Emerson. Now Musto. Middlesbrough still looking to snatch it. Must go again. Mine's Barnby. On to Juninho. A little over elaborate that, but they've kept possession. Whelan lifting it forward. Oh, good defending Melder. Yes, he was. He knew exactly where his keeper was. Possibly had a shout from Colton. But it's very, very calm defending in the last minute of the game. So we're into stoppage time at Roca. by Ray on Fleming Stewart was a bit short that ball but Kevin Ball did his utmost to win it again now Juninho with a little spurt of pace to take him into the danger area but it's too late it's all over and I think we've got a just result really a draw here at Roker Park And the applause says much more than I could about Sunderland's marvellous, spirited performance. Ravanelli got his first away goal in the Premiership. And at that stage, it looked as though Sunderland were in deep trouble. The situation got even worse when they had a player and a key man at that, Richard Ord, sent off. But they wouldn't lie down and this marvellous run by Kevin Ball laid it on for Craig Russell to slide home the equalising goal they thoroughly deserved the point